454, an initiative by the Abu Dhabi government to grow the Arabic media and entertainment business in the region. It's having an impact. So let's take a look at some of the movies 2454 has helped bring to the screen. Hi, it's uh, J Please welcome the woman behind 2454, CEO Nora al -Kabi. She is here with Mary Louise Kelly, contributing editor, Atlantic Live. Thank you. Well, that film was a great uh, introduction to some of the work you're doing here and a great leaping off point for our conversation, as you all have noticed. Many of today's sessions are about innovations in science and technology and engineering. And when I heard Nora was going to be here, I leapt on it and said, yes, it's a chance to talk about innovation in the arts and in the media. And Nora al -Kabi, if you uh, don't already know who she is, is the queen of media. That was the way she was described in a recent profile in Al Arabiya. So welcome. Thank you. And let me start where that film clip just got cut off, Star Wars, which just finished filming here in Abu Dhabi, uh, prompting a headline in the Hollywood Reporter titled, Why Hollywood is Hot on Abu Dhabi. Congratulations Thank you. on that. But there's a little bit of drama here. That film was all set to be filmed in Jordan, which is a somewhat more established filmmaking uh, center in the Middle East, and you came along and stole it away. How did you no, do I didn't. It? <laughs> um, well, uh, of course, with all due respect and admiration to our Jordanian friends, um, they did establish a location in Jordan uh, with an infrastructure and with talent that helped uh, also Jordan uh, to be part of important uh, films from Hurt Locker to Star Wars to many other uh, titles. Um, and for us, when, when Star Wars was, was, was up there and, uh, and, and the scene of uh, a desert, uh, and I think we do have a beautiful desert, the one you saw in the Top Gear um, uh, scene just, just, just now, it, it, it's the Tatooine. So bringing back the Tatooine required a huge, luckily beautiful desert. Right. Uh, so we invited the producers. Um, and, and show them the desert and show them different um, locations within Abu Dhabi. Uh, going back, just backwards, um, and, and why did, are we doing that? Um, right. if, if you allow me, Mary, to just give a little bit of a perspective to our audience. Um, 
Building up an industry here, or let's say developing an industry here, is something that we are looking into from a government uh, uh, point of view, and again from uh, how we nurture talent, and you know, start depending on sectors that are creative or not necessarily linked to oil. Um, and it's a vision of the country. Uh, and for us to do that, we needed to uh, link uh, many aspects together from talents, from the common language, the 300 more, more than 300 million uh, Arab speakers in the region, more than 60% of them are below the age of 25 years old. Uh, I'm sure our students here are, are you know, they're the future of, of uh, how this, this region is going to be formed, uh, and they do have the full right to be part of building that culture. Uh, therefore, the partnership between international expertise, the Hollywoods, the Bollywoods, uh, and regional expertise, and raising or let's say upskilling uh, those talents to be part of the, the film industry is important. Uh, and what is, I mean, when you look at, you wear many hats in this. You're at 2454, which we should mention is, stands for the Geographical Coordinates of Abu Dhabi. You also serve on the board of the film festival and, and wear many uh, different hats here. What's the goal? Is it having George Clooney call you and beg to come shoot his next movie. Wait, why here. not? Yeah, why? Uh, that's, that's a <laughs> worthy goal, I would support it. Or is it, or is it finding the Arab George Clooney and fostering his talent? And I'd like to meet him when you find him, by the way. Okay. <laughs> well, both, I mean, it's... Uh, I mean, for, for us, um, especially in the region, um, we wouldn't be able to do it in Abu Dhabi by ourselves, going back. Mm -hmm. Um, since the inception of the country, we're a multi-cosmopolitan uh, country where we have uh, Emiratis and we have Arabs and we have non-Arabs living with us. Um, when I was young, I was exposed to black and white and colored movies that, uh, um, that are, you know, uh, from, from Egypt. We, we enjoyed watching the, our version of Sesame Street 20 years ago prior to the Gulf War, uh, and it were, which stopped during the Gulf War. We, we enjoyed beautiful content. Right. But there was a halt, right. uh, not a halt in terms of content. There is many Arabic content. Uh, but if I, I don't know, if I ask our youth here, what is their favorite Arabic drama series? I would love to know what is it, or a thriller, or a, or a sci-fi, or any fantasy. So, uh, and again, or a talk show. So the debates goes on. I mean, the, the, that explore, us exploring what what kind of content form our culture is a question that we will always keep asking. Um, so for us, what is the future? Simply, we're in an Arab world. Uh, we're in a location where uh, East meets West. Uh, we, since five years ago or six years ago, since, the, since we launched 2454, we built an infrastructure. We built post-production facilities. We welcomed freelancers to be part of the talents and we welcomed uh, international production to happen, and we injected that with UAE nationals to be part of the filming. So in Star Wars, there were six Emiratis who were in the middle of the desert in Abu Dhabi, and also back in London, in Pinewood Studios, training with JJ and his team. So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an infrastructure, talent, training journey that, that we're we're making sure that we're going back again, linking all of that together um, and being flexible about it. We always need to be flexible about it. How would I be able to develop this industry uh, by working and collaborating together and taking the youth or the next level of talents to a level that will showcase our culture somewhere else? You've been smart about it from a financial point of view as well. I mean, I understand that one of the attractions for big international producers looking where to film their next movie is that Abu Dhabi offers a 30% rebate. rebate. How does that work, briefly? Well, well so uh, we, we said um, to incentivize films to film in Abu Dhabi, going back again when I started talking about Star Wars, there's the desert scene. But, I mean, what would I, I mean, I mean the, the region is filled with deserts. Um, <laughs> and why would it, I make... It limits the movies would that I you can film, yes. <laughs> why would I make our desert more of an interesting one to the filmmakers yeah. and the producers? They will end up watching the bottom line and how much they're spending in each location. 
We're a country that, luckily, we don't, uh, we don't, we don't do tax. Uh, so we, uh, we asked the government, uh, and we, uh, it, was a, it was a pitch that we did two years ago about, okay, we're developing an industry, and to, to do it right is to have a rebate scheme. Support us with the rebate scheme, and, and the outcomes is the, you know, the, uh, how it will support the country from an economic perspective, the indirect, uh, you know, uh, um, let's say positive uh, incomes that certain hotels or services or companies that will set up, a service companies that will set up that production, the talents that will be part of it, the nationals that will be part of the industry as well. So we build it in terms of a, a, a line of a commercial uh, theme and the other one of a strategic and human capital uh, developing theme. Right. Uh, and that's what makes Abu Dhabi the only city in the region that provides a rebate. What about, I wanted to ask about cultural differences. I mean, making Arabic movies, you're hitting, as we said in, in the introduction, more than 300 million native Arabic speakers. I imagine that what appeals to an audience in Algiers may not necessarily be the same thing that hooks an audience in Jeddah. Mm -hmm. um, and then the flip side, cultural differences when you have Hollywood producers coming here. A, a recent example that I saw was that when the big Leonardo DiCaprio blockbuster was screened here, Wolf of Wall Street, yep. 40 minutes 40 cut. minutes was cut out by censors because of what was deemed to be inappropriate content and language. Yeah. I'm curious what your personal reaction is to that. Are you embarrassed by that? Proud of that? <laughs> Does it impact your ability to do business? Okay. So Going from a cultural perspective, yes, 40 minutes were censored, and thus 40 minutes were censored by the distributors of the films here. Uh, and again, um, we do have our cultural uh, uh, and um, you know, framework, uh, which is a sensitive one when we looked into films. Now, do you ever have Hollywood producers saying, eh, yeah, yeah, we, we, we do, not we attractive? Do, yeah, 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 we do have many attention. questions. Yeah. I mean, we. There is, I mean, the moment we sit with the, with the producers who visit Abu Dhabi, so we, we don't go and showcase Abu Dhabi in slides and pictures. Uh, I mean, as long as we'd love to go to, to LA and do that, but it's better to, to invite producers and show them around. This is number one. Uh, show them, you know, the incentive that will be provided, the infrastructure and the service, and then the script. Uh, through the Abu Dhabi Film Commission, we look into the script, uh, and in that script, we make sure that, you know, it's a very clear guidelines. Um, no tricky politics, and tricky politics is abroad, it needs a different uh, summit, I think, for, for our forum for that. No tricky politics and no, uh, you know, nudity. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then we look into other aspects as well. I will never allow doubling Abu Dhabi as another Arabic country that has terrorists in. Uh, the same way I won't allow Abu Dhabi as a country of terrorism, I won't allow it for another Arab country. I'm not saying that there, we, we're a perfect region. I mean, the homeland starts with the terrorist here, Madam Secretary starts with the terrorist here, but it, we have to show that, uh, you know, we would like to, sh to showcase, number one, the positivity, number two, you know, the opportunities that are available uh, in the region. Number three, yes, I mean, there are the bads and the goods, but for me to double allocation in a bad way is something that we won't allow here in the Film Commission. So these are the framework that we work around. And Star Wars was a very safe, uh, again, Disney. Want, uh, you won't go wrong with Disney okay. and Lucas. Okay. I read that when you graduated from university, you felt like you had two choices to go into banking or to go into the oil sector. And you're obviously sitting up here having chosen a different career path, but I wonder what you would say to the students in the audience. Would you encourage them to go home to their parents and say, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna turn down that, that banking job and I'm gonna go work on Arabs Got Talent or, or whatever it is, whatever the great program is. What's your advice? Well, I, my advice is, number one, to follow the, what, you know, their, you know, what they, their, where their passion is. Uh, I did, when I was a student, I followed my passion. I studied information technology. Uh, I ended up working in front of screens. I didn't find my passion when I was working. Um, and, and for me to choose the sector, it was basically, it touched some soft spots in me, you know, the, the content that we miss watching. 
Uh, for example, I'm proudly saying that in 2015, we're bringing, ma bringing back Iftahiya Simsim, Sesame Street. Mm. We're bringing back Nu'man, whoever knows Nu'man. We're bringing that back. So, so that was a soft spot. Although, you know, some, you know it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's how can we bring that um, content creation uh, culture back in the region. Um, so, so the students here, if you're studying, uh, you know, um, nuclear engineer or physics or whatever it is, I'm sure you have a you have a you have a hobby that can contribute in this culture, or maybe you would like to to be part of that industry. We do have the training academy for that, and there are schools for that, and we do have volunteers who never worked in media, uh, but now they're they're just part of it. Most of my, you know, my, 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 my colleagues are engineers or, 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 I don't know, or scientists. So at the end of the day, when, when you're in the sector, you need to be passionate about it. If you want to specialize, then there is this, this certain uh, element. I, but, you know, it's, it's, it's just kind of where, where, where they want to go. Let me open it up. We have time for a couple of questions from the audience. If you would raise your hand, tell us your name, and a brief question. I think we see one over on the sides. We'll just get the microphone over to you. Hi, Ed Atkinson from Dubai Expo 2020. Um, a while ago, David Putnam said when he accepted the Oscar for Chariots of Fire, look out, the Brits are coming uh, to LA. And they did. And they, they went to LA because there was a lack of funding in London. And so they thought that was the land of milk and honey for film finance. Do you see an opportunity here to set up film finance per se rather than just production houses, but for independent film finance, because films have to get made, they have to get sold, they have to get distributed, they have a print and advertising budget. Is that something that you see as a real opportunity here for people coming into the sector? Yeah, definitely. We, we concluded the Abu Dhabi Film Festival a few days ago. The opening of the Abu Dhabi Film Festival was a movie called A to B, which means Abu Dhabi to Beirut. We co-produced it with Imagination Abu Dhabi and with Rotana from Saudi. Um, it's, uh, it's by the Emirati filmmaker Ali Mustafa, who did City of Life prior to that. We're so proud of this film. Uh, three days in a row, uh, tickets were sold out. It's going to premiere in the beginning of January 2015. Now, I, I, I loved the movie, I enjoyed the movie. Um, it's because uh, you end up watching a movie that, that reflects the region. And if it's done by an Emirati, but it shows the Saudi, the, the, the Emirati, the, uh, the Egyptian. It shows, it, it shows us in a way that, you know, you know we're, we're not different than any, any youth anywhere else. Um, so this is, this is one of the projects that we worked on. We do have a small fund for short films uh, that we offer at the Creative Lab. Um, last year, we produced more than uh, 30 short films. It's going around film festivals. Unfortunately, you can't watch it uh, unless you, know, you come to the Creative Lab and watch it. Uh, yet, I do agree with you. We need a fund to finance films. We're working on that with some partners. Um, and the more, the better. I mean, uh, opening a festival with an Arab film was an achievement, I personally see. Uh, and why would I have a film festival without a great opening of an Arab movie? But we need more than that, and we need more TV production that suits the, how the int intellectual level of our youth. You know, they end up watching their Apple TV instead of watching the channels. So we need to shift that a little bit or have our content in the Apple TV and vice versa. Okay. Thank you. One more. We have one here. Um, hi, Noura. My name is uh, Amira Rashad. I'm part of the generation that grew up with uh, Alam Simsim. Uh, actually, my mother was also part of the team that put it together in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, the question I have for you is that with any edutainment uh, property, there's obviously the creative part, but there's also the educational part, which is critical specifically because of we're trying to combine two things. We're trying to combine the cultural aspects of this region as well as the progressive technological perspective that would sort of equip our kids to really be ready for you know, the coming uh, decades. So what kind of research or what kind of preparation on the educational side has been put in place to support that program? Um, thank you. Great question. We, uh, we do have a gr group of advisors from Education Council around the Gulf countries that were uh, looking at the curriculum and, and seeing how we get some um, you know, uh, topics from the curriculum when it, when it goes from 
from you know eating habits to learning Arabic to whatever suits our common uh, goal in an in, in, in education perspective, this is number one. So this is the first layer. We do have that advisory board that we 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 agreed on a we agreed on a on a set of a a whole year of a, of of what type of, of of production that we we would like to do with with the content of that production from um, so this is number one number two is also getting special uh, special people who are specialized in the arabic language uh, 20 years ago the way that we when we were kids consumed the arabic language the level was much higher than right now due to the way that how the you know the, the, the you know the other language are 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 dominating our arabic language so here's also another group that looks into uh, the words and as well how we can uh, implement the, the, the right Arabic language fit into the new, to the new screen. And of course, there is, has been a, a whole year process of creating new jobs of the puppeteers and the voiceovers and, and, and all of that. But the, the education element is, is important and then linking it with, with uh, develop, app developers from 2454. We have more than 300 companies within 2454 focusing on content creation, production, uh, they are gaming as well. Um, uh, and finally, is getting those companies and, 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 and partners to be part to build what is needed for, for, um, for set the future of Tahrir. Right. Thank you for the questions. Nora Al-Kabi, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.